So in today's episode, we wanted to talk about establishing accountabilities around AI. There's a lot of roles and a lot of people involved. Cindy, I know you work a lot with um, you know, CEOs and uh, sales force organizations. What are you thinking from that side of the organization that have much closer ties to the users and the consumers um, and the customers of these organizations? Yeah, the, the use cases that we solve are all around uh, predicting forecasts um, accurately using AI to basically absorb the knowledge or the wisdom of the organizations, whether it's inside the CRM and outside the CRM. So one of the biggest observations I have is educating our clients in terms of what problems they need to solve, what problems we solve, and also giving them evidence uh, very rapidly um, on the value that we can bring. And the fears that I see out there are more around when they don't know what is going into the modeling. And so that's why we have very open, transparent AI belief systems. I know C-suite executives that I speak to kind of see AI on the horizon. And um, really it's already here. And um, there's a lot of development being done. And, and what I like to try to point out is that there, there's a lot, there's an evolution of technology. And you know, there's, there's been a lot of movement towards areas like robotics, machine learning, cognitive intelligence as a path to our artificial intelligence and they can also be used as a path to develop the governance structure around AI. You know, you can start having those ethic officers having dominion over conversations around, okay, as we build these bots, what is the transparency that we put in place? What is the principles that we uh, develop any of these emerging technologies that can be as applicable as you start to dwell into AI? So even if organizations go, well, you know what, we do have this small group doing innovative thinking and, and research into AI, but it's not yet mainstream, so we can wait. But really, be honest, you don't, you can't wait until you've got a fully productionized um, algorithm to start thinking about the ethical principles you want to apply to this technology or some of the, the governance and controls that you want to put in place in it. Yeah. But what you can do is kind of look to say, okay, if we look at our whole spectrum of how we are developing and investing into emerging technology and basically apply these type of um, social constructs that we maybe haven't had in place in a corporation, like having an ethics officer, yeah. um, you know, that could be someone who could, again, have a role over the evolution of all those kind of technologies. Yeah, I think it's like with um, any kind of uh, transformational change that you need a plan. Yeah. You know, you need a roadmap. You know, you need to step back and kind of assess, am I ready for AI? Right. The answer is unequivocally, you better be because the world, you know, is moving so rapidly in this space that you've got to drive the learning. The question is, where is it incubated? Where does it come in? Do you even know where it is? And I think to some of the discussions you and I had earlier, like what are the decision frameworks and the risks around these different, uh, you know, solutions? And I think there's some really great um, principles that have already been communicated by some of the non-for-profit organizations that have said, look, you know, we definitely see a future with artificial intelligence. It's, um, it's, it's not if, it's when. Um, but we need to do it in a, in a controlled manner. We need to do it in a way that we don't outpace our ability to govern and control it um, by trying to kind of speed too far ahead into the functionality. And um, what I'm concerned about is that we're seeing more, a lot of investment in the functionality side and not that same parallel investment into the, the governance and the, the control side of, which really has to be developed you know, in parallel. Yeah. And I think that's where the regulatory bodies, particularly in, you know, more controlled industries, you know, like financial services, the healthcare, the pharma um, industry, I do see that they'll be putting in more frameworks for control. But then there's other sectors like high tech, for example, that don't have the same kind of constraints. And, um, you know, I see huge gaps in protecting consumers and also protecting customers. But if I think about from the user perspective, you know, within an organization that's usually represented, you know, from the COO, the operating officer, or the sales, you know, organization, what's your thoughts having work, you know, with a lot of those organizations as to what their role in accountability and AI should be? Well, I think the chief operating officer is in a very good position to uh, really intensify the risk reviews, right? And they're naturally curious. Um, I think they have a responsibility to know what business processes or vendors have any AI capability and they really should be able to have a list in a nanosecond 
so they know where AI is in their organization, but also there should be an AI, if I call it, roadmap that's very, very clear. Um, because so many vendors, if they have specific mathematical algorithms and if they've been modified, I think one of the issues we talked about earlier is what's underlying those mathematical calculations that are driving specific decisions, right? If they don't know what problem it's solving, it's very difficult to lead or to govern. AI really does span the full area of the organization, whether it be HR or whether it be the C-suite, the technology group, the sales organizations, you need to have everyone at the table right from the beginning. Okay. Um, and you know they don't have to be slowing down the AI development. They actually will probably help it to be developing faster in, in meeting users' needs. And, and those different perspectives will actually, I, I feel, will bring a, a better product. And I think what's important to layer over top of all the groups that we spoke about is kind of those, those risk and governance mm -hmm. functions that um, usually do tend to kind of laggard behind the technology yeah. and I think it's really important that they get invited to the table right from the beginning that they can start developing some of those those principles and those risk and control frameworks that um, are going to kind of help to govern um, how the AI is developed. Mm -hmm.